So with all of that in mind, let's take a minute and talk a little bit about the future of banking. Obviously, computers and handheld devices have made this banking entirely different and convenient. It's the sort of uh, service that is becoming enmeshed in our, our daily activities. Um, however, at the same time, hackers have stolen millions of banking customers' IDs, etc., by tricking them into visiting websites and downloading and then they are they download malicious software that gives the hackers sometimes access to their tra their their um, passwords. So not only has it helped, but it also has opened up uh, this whole new risk area for our, all of our financial assets. Rapid advances in innovation and technology are challenging the banking industry at the same time, requiring it to make some significant change. As we said earlier. Um, more and more companies offer online services and the like. During the 2007-2008 timeframe, <clears throat> the financial markets collapsed under a weight of a declining housing prices that were supported by what were called subprime mortgages. These are mortgages that are made to uh, borrowers who were, they call low quality, meaning the, light, the chances of them paying back the mortgages were <clears throat> was not that high, but those securities were then packaged up and sold into the public markets without clarifying where the risk was. The future, and that, that caused a, a uncertainty in the market and ultimately this collapse as the home prices fell. The future of the structure of the banking system is in the hands of the United States Congress. In reaction to the financial meltdown and severe recession, Congress passed the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, the full name implies that the intent of the, the act was to eliminate the ability of the act to create uh, problems of this type in the future. Um, there's lots of controversy about that in the uh, political system. Um, so issues it continues to come up. The name continues to come up and changes or improvements to that or protect, perhaps uh, eliminating some of its provisions is in the oft is, uh, is possible in the upcoming political debates. In broad terms, shadow banking refers to companies performing banking functions of some sort that are not really regulated by banking regulators. Shadow banking activities are increasing largely because so much can occur on this, in this online world. In a letter to shareholders in 2013's annual report, Jamie Dimon, who's the CEO and chairman of J.P. Morgan Chase, was quoted as saying to his shareholders that the bank will face tough competition, including shadow banking. In addition, shadow banks mentioned by Mr. Diamonds, there are peer-to-peer -peer lenders like Prosper, a company that matches investors and borrowers with loans of between $2,000 and $35,000. These are to try and make individuals loan to others to bypass the banking industry. Uh, there are other sources of funding by internet websites such as GoFundMe, which helps people enhance their life skills, raise money for healthcare issues, and more. Another similar website is Kickstarter, which funds creative projects in the worlds of art, film, games, music, and so on. And the last item we'll talk about is um, mobile money transfer. Uh, developing economies, the financial infrastructure is not that well supported. Many people in these areas have had to travel many hours on food or train to retrieve their money for everyday purchases such as food. Well, M-Pesa uh, was created to alleviate this problem. It's a mobile money transfer system. It uses mobile phones which have become widespread in developing countries to make money uh, transfers. All that is required is the user to have their national ID or passport information and they can send and receive money within a matter of minutes. So there's a lot of this electronic world which is only now developing. Um, remember, it also carries with it risks of either being defrauded because regulation is not, uh, not necessarily up to speed or having your information hack and your identity stolen. So these are things to keep in mind. Banking system is in quite a bit of, uh, of change 
uh, during this period of time due to due to all of the internet and also the political or the global political situation. So we'll, uh, that wraps up this module, except for the discussion, which we'll um, which we'll talk about. We uh, will discuss some of these topics in the Moodle uh, session online. Some of the things we'll talk about are what are the six characteristics of money? Explain how the U.S. dollar has those six characteristics. Uh, discuss four of the goals of the Federal Reserve. What are they trying to accomplish? Um, and how do they use? What do they use to achieve their monetary policy? Those four approaches. Um, what do credit unions charge? Why do credit unions charge lower rates? You think than commercial banks, or why can they? And how are mutual funds, money market funds, pension funds similar? And how are they different? And how does this all relate to the banking system? So we'll see you online as we discuss these these questions.